Rogan. Bye back. If you rely upon the record, I think what you're going to find is the basis for why the ALJ is recommended against the project without prejudice and why the AD is going through the seemingly complicated process of a further compliance filing. It's doing it largely because it has no choice, because the record doesn't support what you've heard today by the ISO and SDG&E. I'm afraid you'll have little choice in making a decision on this case, but to read the record, to look at the comments that are submitted, to weigh those facts, and to place, and hopefully each of you will have staff attending that meeting next week, the all-party meeting that's being sponsored by Commissioner Grunick, to talk through those conditions and to hone them. They need honing. There's no question about it. UCAN's position, we support the PD. It is right. Based on the evidentiary record, it's right. It's not what you want. It's not, I think, what the governor wants in terms of promoting renewables. It is the right decision based on the evidence that was presented by all the parties. And I must admit to having a tremendous amount of pride and frankly being honored uh, by the, the extent to which the, both the, the PD, written by the two judges, and the AD, written by Commissioner Grunick, honored the process and the efforts by the parties and actually stuck to the evidentiary record and resisted the temptation to contort the facts so as to arrive at an outcome that they wanted. I think all of us would like to see more renewables. I think all of us would like to see greater reliability as promoted by the ISO. The real issue you have before you is with the facts presented by the proponents sufficient to risk $1.7 billion or more of the ratepayers' money. That, to my mind, is the question before you. I thank you for the, in advance for the effort and for the responsibility that's going to be undertaken in trying to arrive at a proper decision. It is not easy. I've been practicing for this commission for 27 years. I don't think I've ever been involved in as complex, technically complex and challenging a case as this one or for that matter, as time consuming as this one. Uh, I now probably make no friends when I say we are now handing this thing off to you. <laughs> and I thank you for that. Thank you. Commissioner Bond, please. Mr. Shames, can I ask a question? You've obviously gone over the record carefully. One of my concerns is the, diff or the, the seeming differential in the cost estimates in terms of time. Uh, there are proposals based on one series of cost sequences, and then there are cost competitiveness, uh, cost effectiveness uh, assertions that don't, at least at first blush, seem to square with the same time sequence. For example, it is alleged that part of the, the, the cost estimates uh, need to be accelerated because of the cost of steel and cement and all of those things. <laughs> Is it your view that the evaluation of the cost effectiveness in both of these decisions uh, in terms of the alternatives and the proposal are, are comparable in terms of time. In other words, the argument is, is made that there's a huge acceleration of cost, which I think is, is generally the case. Uh, is the acceleration of cost been put in both sides of the equation? Uh, it's, a, it's a fair question. I, I, would, I would suggest to you um, there was some general evidence in the record about the acceleration of costs due to the increasing cost of steel, cement, and other commodities, basic commodities. It's outside the scope of the evidentiary record, but I would suggest to you to look at the fact that all those commodity prices now have dropped dramatically since those estimates. It's hard to say. Here's what I can say that is based on the record, and that is to a large extent the cost effectiveness that you refer to is driven almost entirely, almost entirely, by the renewable equation. It's the renewable energy and the access to that renewable energy which really drives between 87 to 97 percent of the cost effectiveness. Uh, and if you go look at, in fact, if you look at the ISO's rebuttal testimony, a rebuttal um, uh, brief, I think you'll see the ISO acknowledges that is really what's driving the cost effectiveness of this line. It is the renewable power element of it. It's not so much the construction costs or the timing. I see, yes, thank you. Other questions? Very well. Uh, 
that concludes the opening argument and we'll go off the record as the project proponents come forward for rebuttal.